Okay, so we're going to be doing a high level migration from open text onto SharePoint online. So briefly for the purposes here, we're looking at a live link system, or rather an open text system with some dummy data related to some employees and some sales clients. And the very first thing that, you know, Zilio really tries to do with its customers is making sure that we're all on the same page about the data that we're looking at. And really the way we need to do this is by extracting the data that we see here. So if I had this client who's looking to migrate this uh, data over to SharePoint, I would first need to extract all of this data and make sure we've captured everything that the client is looking to migrate. So I actually use the Zill4 tool to migrate over to SharePoint Online. This is essentially a drag and drop tool or low code tool rather built out to have many different connectors easily uh, configured to do extractions, transformations and loading. So anything related to a migration. So in this example, I'm going to use this open text content server source connector to extract the data from here. So if I look at the configurations, I actually just need to specify uh, the actual root ID of what I'm going to be extracting. So that is the digit found here on open text. You can actually see the object IDs of any folders as well, also known as nicknames um, here as well. So I would actually just need to configure and add this ID quite simply here where it says root IDs. Now I only have one root, but if I had multiple, I could add a comma and then add the next ID number there. I'm going to be using MongoDB as my database, and that's why you see a Mongo connection here. And I'm also saying I want to download the files, uh, but not the different versions. I want to capture the categories, which is a metadata uh, field in open text. And once I've actually configured it correctly, and you'll notice here as well, the Zill4 tool uses encryption to keep credentials. So here the open text username and open text password is stored on the application itself without it being shown in the actual flows. But once I've configured it correctly, I'll just hit play and we'll start seeing uh, these numbers shoot up. And basically we're making API calls to the open text environment to now start extracting the data that we want to capture. Now, we obviously start with the extraction, like I said, to make sure that our clients and ourselves are all on the same page about what we're going to be doing. So I think Cornet also did mention before how we build out dashboards to really build out insights that the client can better understand their own data and can then actually make uh, better decisions for the migration itself. So for the purposes of this demo, the data we're migrating is very small, so it's a much faster extraction, transformation and loading. But I've built out this dashboard to replicate uh, more common cases that we see with um, with clients. So we're talking about, you know, terabytes of data and, you know, file counts far exceeding um, the amount that we're migrating right now. But essentially, we will always customize our dashboards to the real requirements that our clients show us. So, you know, Corne did mention earlier how different departments might have different needs. And so if it's necessary for the client, we might be building out different dashboards for marketing or for sales or for IT or for whatever team. Um, once we've completed the extraction and we can see that it's done, um, we would then essentially present to our clients their data and make sure that, again, we have the, the right understanding. So right off the bat, we can see a couple of very valuable things. We can see that, you know, there's nearly 700 gigabytes worth of duplicated files on the system we've extracted from. So, you know, this translates to quite a bit of cost uh, across years of storage fees. Um, and we can actually then try and further understand why are these files duplicated? Are they necessary? Or should we take this migration as an opportunity to, you know, save costs onto the new system? So if we've extracted from open text, you know, we might not need to move over those uh, nearly 700 gigabytes over to SharePoint Online. Of course, everything should be verified by the actual departments uh, owning that data. And we're really just presenting these ideas to the clients who should really there make the decisions on whether they want to, you know, exclude or include anything else. Now, we also get a good understanding of the different content. So we can see here, you know, we've got a bunch of Office 365 files. We've also got some JPEGs or any kind of image, you know, extension. We've got some videos, simple text files, and, and so on and so forth. We can also see how active the data is. And by activity, we're really measuring when it's last been modified or in some cases when it's first created. This really helps us because we can then determine, you know, which departments are very active or which departments are not very active 
and you know see it spread out across the timeline you know perhaps certain months uh, you'll see that certain departments are a lot more active than others. And if there's anything to, to gain specifically for a department, uh, we'll try and make sure that we print out, you know, as useful as the reports as they can be. And we're also open to any kind of customized reports that we might be able to gather from the insights. But the primary reason really for all of these insight sessions, aside from the actual business insights that the client might get, is to understand what we will be needing to transform from the source system, in this case, open text, over to SharePoint. So if you don't know, SharePoint has a few illegal characters that you would not be able to have in your file names. So this includes, you know, these question marks and these other symbols that you see along here. So this pipe and so on and so forth. So if these rules do not exist in a system like OpenText or any other uh, source system you have, you would encounter problems when trying to migrate it over. So for example, I've actually seen now in this dummy data alongside each of these names of the HR employees, we have a folder referring to the miscellaneous files. So it says MISC and then a full stop. So older names in SharePoint Online, similar to your Windows machines, they cannot actually contain the full stop, not at the end. And so this is something that would need to be transformed before we actually import into SharePoint Online to actually prevent any kind of errors that would occur to the folder itself or as well to uh, any of the children files within it. Um, alongside this, there are other requirements such as the path lengths. So in SharePoint Online, the path length of the URL is built out of the preceding folders in a structure. So if you have long folder names and you're 20 folders deep, you would build out quite a long and substantial URL and anything exceeding the 400 character limit would cause a problem. So when we see things like this, you know, we start making decisions with the client about what's our best approach to, you know, make sure that when we migrate the content over to SharePoint Online, we won't encounter any problems. Um, alongside that, we also, you know, I think it's been mentioned before, the size of the duplicates, here are the 600 gigabytes, but we actually can see how many specifically. So perhaps, you know, if you only see a couple of duplicates, but a large amount, these are usually videos of sorts. We've seen Christmas videos and everything from clients in the past. Um, but we also see other things that might not be costly, might be good to clean out anyway, such as zero byte files. That This is something that will actually make, obviously, the target environment, in this case, SharePoint, much cleaner for anybody using it. So we do try and use the migration as an opportunity for the clients themselves to improve the system, not only with the functionalities that that the target system offers, but also through the value that Zillow can provide for, for the clients. So after we've actually gone through the insights dashboards and provided the relevant reports that a client might ask us for, we then better understand what kinds of transformations we need to do. So as I showed earlier, we have some folder names that are incompatible with SharePoint's rules. So we would know that we would need to transform it. So I'm going to go back to the Zillow 4 tool itself, and I would run a couple of transformations. So not to get too technical, but essentially we need to transform the content types of the files to correspond to an ID that SharePoint has assigned for files within the document library we're migrating it to. So that's what this flow here does. This flow here, what I'm doing is also redirecting the root folders. So I'm redirecting these two HR employees and sales clients folders to actually point to the document library on SharePoint itself. And here the transformation of invalid names. If we double click here, we can see what I'm querying. I'm actually asking for all of the files whose source name is this MISC dot and I'm going to be updating it with a new name, which is simply the same letters, but now removing the dot, which we know is an invalid character. So once I run this, we can see counter here. We've essentially called on eight items and updated eight items now. At any point as well, I can verify that this is the case with my database, which I have here. So if I view here, my source name is indeed MISC dot, but my target name should now be the same thing without the dot. So this would then prepare the data for the migration over to SharePoint because we've now removed one of the rules that uh, would have prevented it from uploading. So from there, I go to a target connector and I'm just going to run it now so we can let SharePoint upload. And what, what this uh, connector is doing is similarly to the open text connector, I've now on, on the SharePoint side added the right configurations that I'll need. So information such as my SharePoint credentials, the Azure container string, which is basically the connection to Azure, which hosts a lot of the data before it's actually shipped over to SharePoint Online. And I've given it the right information to find the document library I'm sending it over to. So I've already ran the upload here and it's, it's indicating that it's done. So if I now actually visit 
demo site. So we can see that the folders are here. And on top of that, you can see that actually we've carried over the metadata of the modified date. So you can see here this January 10th, January 9th. All of this should be corresponding exactly to the same metadata that we had on the other side. So you can see here, for example, the same things. So yeah, you can see here how Apex Enterprises was the only one modified on January 9th. This is the same case over here. And likewise, we're expecting on the HR side, everything to look the same except for the transform name. Again, just removing that dot on the folder names. So if I went over here and found one of these files, you'll see here that the MISC is captured, but the dot in the name is removed. And hence, we've had a migration without actually bumping into any of the issues or restraints that SharePoint might have otherwise put on our on our data. So I hope that's a clear sort of high level overview of what we do in our migrations and how we present insights to clients, again, tailored to their specific environments. And I just want to also showcase a bunch of the source connectors as well as the target connectors that Zilio has on offer for any of clients looking to, to migrate their systems.